Amazing. So thank you so much, Professor, for joining. Um, it's a pleasure having you on. Um, I'd love to, if you could give an introduction of yourself and maybe your educational background history. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Connell Follenkamp. I am a professor of the practice, and I'm the director of undergraduate studies in the economics department at Duke University in beautiful Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I've been here you know, a long time. I, I think this is something like my 25th year at Duke, uh, and it's not even my first job. I had a job at Notre Dame before that. I was in the business school there. Uh, I uh, I was hell-bent on uh, working for the Fed when I was a young buck, and so I studied economics at Mich Michigan State, and then I got my PhD uh, in economics at Harvard, um, mostly studying macroeconomics and time series econometrics. I didn't actually end up working at the Fed, and uh, in retrospect, I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, went into academics instead, and uh, haven't looked back. Awesome. Well, um, congratulations on 25 years at Duke. That's awesome. Um, how would Time you? Flies. Yeah. <laughs> um, how would you say that the economics department at Notre Dame versus Duke compares? Well, so at Notre Dame, I was actually in the business school, and that's because at the time, the Notre Dame uh, economics part was full of Marxists. It was like, a, they called themselves institutional economists. They were kind of like Marxists. Um, so uh, a few years after I left Notre Dame, they actually kind of closed down the old economics department and started up a new one that was a much more of a standard economics department. So uh, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, uh, it, it, I was in the business school in the finance and business economics department. So I was teaching economics and financial economics courses uh, to undergraduate business majors predominantly, although I did a lot of MBA teaching as well there. Very cool. What specifically got you intrigued in economics and kind of got your career started? Yeah. So, um, as you can probably guess, I'm old. So I was alive a long time ago uh, when inflation, the last time inflation was really high. And uh, I was really intrigued by that and intrigued by the fact that nobody knew what in the world to do about it. And suddenly um, the Fed had a change in leadership and had some people who were really trying some interesting new policies that did seem to work against inflation. I thought that was really cool. And I would like to try to do that myself. Very cool. And where do you see the future of economics heading, um, specifically in careers with AI and, you know, a lot of competition? Well, I think I think AI is going to affect economics the same way it's going to affect a lot of careers. Um, it's going to make a lot of stuff that we that is tedious and that we have to sweat a lot over. It's going to it's going to automate that. Um, it might help people do simpler research tasks. Um, and it might help us find new insights that we haven't seen before. You know, one of the things that AI is good at is finding patterns that human beings don't see. Um, that is always uh, an advantage when you're doing things like research. So I think it's going to help in a number of ways. I don't think it's going to take the humans out of the equation. Um, uh, it's certainly not, certainly not in the educational s the sphere anytime soon. I don't think. Um, probably not in research either. Um, but I, it, it'll certainly it'll certainly help. It'll be it'll augment. You know, one of the things we see in a lot of uh, a lot of areas of, of endeavor is that um, when you pair human beings and machines, uh, you do better than hu human beings alone or machines alone. So I think that's going to be the case in economics, like everything else. Amazing, and particularly with your Duke students, is there any characteristics that you notice you kind of see being a pattern of them becoming very strong within the field, and some characteristics you think m might indicate that this is a good field for someone? Um, well, certainly economics is uh, it's fairly quantitative. It doesn't have to be like over the top quantitative, but it's fairly quantitative, and so the students who've done really well are comfortable. With, with with numbers and comfortable with math and comfortable with stats. I don't think it has to be um, something you absolutely love, but if it's something you really hate, that, that usually doesn't help if you study economics. You know, a lot of economics is just trying to visualize, uh, taking some really interesting ideas about how humans behave and how the economy behaves and trying to visualize those things and trying to represent them in a concrete way. And, and to do that, you've got to use graphs, you've got to use math. Uh, I got to use numbers and that, and, and, and it's really helpful if it's done right. So, uh, the, the students I've seen who've done really well are at least comfortable with the quantitative aspect of economics. You know, there are a lot of really cool ideas, but in order to be able to, to use them on a day-to-day -day basis, you've got to, you've got to have some, some interest and some comfort, comfort with using quantitative stuff. 
Of course. Yeah. Being in, like able to analyze what's going on through graphs and numbers is super essential. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be really complicated math. You know, I teach corporate finance and the math in there is like, it's fourth grade math. It's yeah. like, you know, the perfect use of fourth grade math. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think when you put it in those words, it seems like a lot more approachable to someone that might be, you know, scared to enter. Yeah, I mean, it can get wickedly complicated, too. But like, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So there's lots of there's lots of rooms in the profession. There's lots of room in the profession for people who really want to tool up and get, you know, just like quantitatively whack. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, as I like to tell my students, there's a branch of finance called term structure modeling in which the people who do that call um stochastic calculus uh folk math and like stochastic calculus is like whack complicated yeah. already yeah yeah crazy well um in regards to research how do you think that might be like essential or important specifically to economics um yeah economics is is really research driven you know we're trying to f- figure out how people behave and what they do and trying to test economic relationships all the time um, so uh, economics has a lot of both quantitative research, empirical research using data about how people behave and how the economy behaves. There's also a lot of uh, theoretical research trying to develop new models to think about um, uh, you know, how, how things, try to propose how things work um, and try to f- find consequences for uh, different activities. So, um, so I have colleagues who are really strong in the empirical side. Uh, and have done some really amazing work. You know, one of my colleagues is Peter Arcidiakono, a labor economist. His work has been featured in some of the the court cases about um, racial preferences in college admissions. Uh, so he's been in the news a lot, and he does really outstanding work in that field and contributed a lot to this debate. Um, other colleagues of mine are theoretical economists who are um, you know, pushing forward the the frontiers of game theory and strategic interaction. So you know, there there room there's a lot of room for people who want to do both kinds of research. It's a lot easier for for students to get started with the empirical stuff because you know working with data is a lot more uh, is a lot more approachable. Um, to do theoretical research in economics, again, this is one of those places where you really got to tool it up with the math and be comfortable, you know, working with complicated equations and stuff like that. Of course, yes. And I was fortunate enough to have Peter on. Um, and he was super, like, knowledgeable of what his niche was. And as you mentioned, like, racial within the admissions process and, like, just kind of applying that with your, like, research is super powerful. Yeah, and he he's done a lot of really interesting work too with the with the decisions that college students make once they're in college. So that's also yeah. really pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. my final question was: Do you have any resources such as books, websites, or articles you would recommend to anyone wanting to learn more? <laughs> I always send people right to the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a great it's a great way to keep up with you know what the what the trends and what the emerging ideas are in economics, what some of the problems are that that economists are grappling with. Um, I, um, um, since I do a lot of financial economics, I send a lot of my students to Investopedia because it's a great website to, that helps people understand a lot of the basics of financial economics. Um, and you know, everybody could, could stand to know more about how finance, financial markets work because it's such an important part of our, our lives. We've got to save for college. We've got to save for a house. We've got to save for retirement and stuff like that. And knowing how to do that is really important. Um, in terms of other resources, gosh, um, you know, you can um, you can pick up a used like copy of a principles textbook by somebody really good like Greg Mankiw for you know almost nothing. Um, th- that's always a good resource. He's a really excellent author. He was on my um, thesis committee at Harvard and a fantastic teacher and a good writer. Um, uh, another person I've come in contact with is Charlie Whelan at Dartmouth. He wrote the book Naked Economics, which is a fantastic introduction to economics. I would recommend that. Uh, for people who are um, a little bit more skeptical, skeptical of economics, one of my favorite books is called The End of Theory. Um, and it is a really excellent criticism of economics uh, that I agree with a lot. And it points for a future direction for economics, which is uh, quite challenging, something called agent-based models, which is at the cutting edge. So that's a quick list. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to check all of those out. And I really appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Yep. Bye.